Hello, I'm Russ, and welcome to Simply Wooden Creations. Last year when I attended the Tampa, Florida Woodworking Show, I purchased this full-size carbide tip lathe tool. It wasn't long after that a good friend of mine, Tommy, Tommy G from over at Tommy G's Workshop, posted a video on his YouTube channel of him making full-size carbide tip lathe tools. Well, that video both intrigued and inspired me to try to make one of my own. So this video is all about me making my own carbide full-size lathe tool. Now, Tommy G also makes a full line of carbide tip lathe tools, and he has them for sale over on his website, TommyGWorkshop.com. So go by there and visit him today. Simply Wooden Creations is sponsored by Devobel Technologies. For web design, development, and hosting, visit devobel.com. FastCap, innovative products for the professional woodworker. FastCap.com. And Olivewood 2000. For beautiful, elegant, Holy Land olive wood, visit Olivewood 2000 on eBay today. I'm going to start by ripping some mahogany that I have down to two inches wide on the table saw. And then it's over to the planer to thin them up a little bit and also ensure that they're nice and flat for glue up. I'm going to take one of the strips of mahogany and I have a piece of half inch thick, two inches wide hickory and I'll be gluing them together. I use a piece of wax paper just to keep the glue from getting all over the top of my workbench. Now I'll just add a bunch of clamps. After the glue dried, I'm going to be cutting a half inch wide by half inch deep, eight inches long groove in the hickory to accept the half inch metal bar stock. I'll do this in a couple of passes. And I'll check to make sure it fits nice and tight. Using a chisel, I'll square up the end of the slot. Now I'll glue these two pieces together. I'll try my best not to get too much yellow wood glue in the slot for the bar stock. And once again, adding more clamps. While waiting for the glue to dry, I'm going to cut a piece of the half inch steel bar stock about 16 inches long. Just before cutting all the way through, I remembered I wanted to cut some slots in the bar stock so the epoxy could get in there when I glue it into the handle.
Now I need to cut the end of the steel bar stock to accept the carbide tip. Since this is the first one I've ever made, I'm just going to use a hacksaw and cut the notch by hand to try to keep it as accurate as possible. I'm going to use a hand file to clean the notch up. Using an angle grinder, I'm going to put a bevel on the end of the bar stock and the back side of the notch. Then once again, I'm going to clean it up with the file. Using a center punch, I'm going to mark the end where I need to drill a hole in the bar stock. Then over at the drill press, I'll drill an 11 64th inch hole into the end of the bar stock. Using lubricant helps speed up the cutting and also saves the drill bit. Using a larger drill bit, I'm going to countersink the hole a little bit for the screw. I'll run a tap through the hole to cut the threads for the machine screw that will hold the carbide tip in place. When using a tap, you need to take your time and use plenty of oil. A little cleanup and a test fit. Looks good to me. Once the glue has dried on the pieces for the handle, I'll take it over to my lathe and begin to roughing it round. I'm going to try my hand at using both the carbide and conventional tools. Once I've got it roughed in round, I'm going to start working on the end where I'll be inserting the bar stock. Um, I need to make this a very, very tight fit for the copper coupling that I'm going to be using on the end. So I'll check back and forth using my calipers. And eventually, I'll use the actual coupling to make sure it's the right size. I want a good snug fit. And yes, it does. A nice tight fit. Using a real coarse piece of sandpaper, I'm going to scratch the interior of the copper coupling. I'm going to be using my favorite CA glue, Fast Caps 2P10 Medium, to attach the copper coupling to the wood. I'll let it dry for a few minutes before I continue turning. Using the original tool I had purchased, I'm going to use it as a template and put some marks on the blank as reference points so when I begin turning my handle. Now I'll begin shaping the handle.
using the carbide detailer, I'll put some grooves in the handle. Once the handle is shaped, it's time for sanding. I'll start off with about 220 grit sandpaper and work my way up to 600. For the finish, I'm going to use some thinned boiled linseed oil, and after that dries, I'll apply a couple of coats of wipe on poly sanding between coats. Once the finish is dried, I use a handsaw to cut the handle from the piece still in the chuck. And there we have it, my very first carbide lathe tool. In my excitement, there's one thing that I forgot to do, and that was hit the record button on the camera when I epoxied this bar stock into the handle. It's really a straightforward process. All I did was mix up two-part epoxy and pour it into the handle and inserted the bar stock with a carbide tip. Now this really needs to sit for about 24 hours before you use it. Matter of fact, I haven't even got to use mine, but I'm looking forward to using it when I try to turn some bowls. I really had a lot of fun making and filming this project. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you and God bless.